and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Hi everybody and welcome back to Whipper Whipper Will Holler Whipper Will <laughs> Holler That's it I'm Miss Lori And I'm Mr. Brown And welcome to the kitchen Today it is so hot outside so we're going to stay in the house and we're going to cook Isn't that going to be great <laughs> And you know a lot of people think that you you know they don't eat soup and, and stews and chilies and chowders and stuff like that unless it's cold weather. I like soup. I do too. I do. I do. I really do. <clears throat> if you are new to our channel, we are Whippoorwill Holler Homestead. And uh, we just do all kinds of stuff around here. But today, like I said, we're going to be cooking. Mr. Brown's going to be making some old-fashioned hot water cornbread here in a little bit. Yum, yum. <laughs> but we're going to get started on, it is called a a summer corn and zucchini chowder. 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 Don't that sound good, though? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I see all the ingredients. <laughs> I took about, I don't know, four or five strips of bacon and uh, cooked them up pretty crisp. And I left the, the bacon grease here in our skillet. And we're going to use this bacon grease, and it's still got some of the bacon bits in it, but I don't care. It just makes it taste that much better. It's probably got a little more than probably what I need, but <clears throat> be okay because we've got, uh, we're going to saute about a half of a yellow onion, whatever kind of onion you've got and you use. And we've got uh, two stalks of cut up celery. Two stalks of cut up so celery. So you got bacon and bacon grease, and you got celery and onions. So we're off to a good start. Huh? You know how good that's going to smell. <laughs> I know. You got this nice uh, vegetarian. Yes. Putting in that bacon it, grease. I know. That just, uh, but you know, bacon grease. It's good stuff. We use it in moderation. We don't, you know, I think people get the, the mindset that southern people, that's all they do is. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a bunch of fried uh, bacon grease, a bunch of fried up stuff, and that's just, that's not always the that case. really nobody proved to me yet that, uh, <laughs> in moderation that it's harmful. <laughs> it's not. But uh, we're going to saute these up. I have uh, grandparents that live to be 99 year old, and they use lard and bacon grease. I've seen a, a woman on a... I don't remember if it was Facebook or YouTube. May have been a commercial. I don't remember. But she was like 101 years old. And she said that all her life she ate bacon. And we're not saying bacon. You know, you need to just hog out on bacon. It's good for us. It's not what I'm saying. But uh, she said she drank Dr. Pepper every day. Mm -hmm. Bacon. I forget what all she said. She said, I'm 100 year, 101 year old. I think she's had good genetics. Because you have to be careful, that's for sure. And just eat stuff like this in moderation. Now, the chowder is not going to be unhealthy for you. But a little bit of bacon grease sauteing is not going to hurt you. So we're going to let the onions and the celery saute just a little bit. It's already smelling good in here, isn't it? It smells wonderful. I love onions cooking. That ain't no bad. I do too. That. So I got all my other ingredients here. We're going to get this sauteed and we'll be back probably about three minutes after these have softened up just a little bit. Okay, we got, it's been about a couple minutes and they're starting to get translucent a little bit and the celery's starting to soften up. 
And that's pretty much what you want. And I know you're looking at that and thinking, boy, that's a lot of bacon grease. But it's really not because we're fixing to take, this was five ears of fresh corn uh, that was put up. And I just got it out of the freezer and, and cut it off the cob. Um, you can use uh, frozen corn if you want to. I know some people probably ask me if they can use canned corn because that's all they got. I'm going to say yes, but I would, if you got fresh corn, that's what I'd use, or if you got frozen. But if you just got canned corn, that's going to work too. Strain your liquid off your canned corn. Strain your liquid off your canned corn, for sure. Okay, these five ears of corn that I've got here, I'm going to put them in here. And we're going to let them saute for about three to four minutes with the onions and the celery. And if you have some of these little stringy things from your corn on the cob, you and you know. and you live with Mr. Brown, you be, <laughs> you want to have most of it out of there because he will be the one that finds it. I'll just eat it. You just eat it. Okay, I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. It's already smelling wonderful in here. Now I won't be making my soup in this pan. We'll be uh, switching over to my pot. As soon as we get the corn sauteed. Now I know we haven't uploaded anything in, uh, all this week. When was my last upload? I can't remember. We've been so busy working I can't even keep up with the days. You know one day I asked somebody, I think it was one of the teachers, I said, and I felt really bad, but I said, what day is it? <laughs> And she, she kind of thought about it, too, and she said, I, I think it's Wednesday, Miss Lori. And I said, I don't even know what day it is anymore. We have been that busy. Okay, we're... It's been kind of hectic. It has, but it's been for everybody up there at school. I mean, if you're new to our channel and you don't know what Mr. Brown... We don't just homestead. That's just... Uh, that's, that's how we live, is homesteading. But we work off the homestead and have for years. And... Uh, about three and a half years, I'll have 28 years in with school system. Uh, Mr. Brown, of course, always worked. Uh, how many years you got in school system? I think this is my 14th year. 14th year. Before that, he was a owner-operator truck driver uh, for 17 years. Roughly. Uh, but anyways, we've always worked. So it has been, and I know it's been in a lot of other places too, it's been so hot these several weeks and uh, it just drains you. So you come in from work and you always got chores to do and either that or you don't make it until late. So, but anyways, we're gonna get this done for y'all and it's gonna be so good. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. And we have been missing y'all too. Okay, our corn mixture has been sauteing for about four minutes now. And you see it's, uh, that amount of bacon grease was <laughs> pretty good for all that in that skillet. And I've got uh, four cloves of minced garlic right here. And we're going to put that in. And we're just going to saute this for about a minute. Because you don't want to accidentally uh, burn your garlic because burnt garlic will run a dish real quick you know i believe you could almost eat that just like it is <laughs> i know it that's what, that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking it might taste pretty good <laughs> well you know we like uh fried corn like this put onions and bell peppers and garlic in it and just fry it up skill it's so good that's pretty much what we're doing here but this is going to be a chowder Chowder. You gotta say it right too. Of course, <laughs> of course, my hillbilly accent it don't sound right, but because it comes from up in the northeast, is that what you're saying? Chowder. 
Chad? I don't know, but I bet somebody can tell us where it's originated from because there's a lot of good recipes out there for all kinds of chowders. And this is going to be one of them. Wasn't our oldest son was bragging on some clam chowder from Maine? Or where, wasn't it he up in there? I think him and. Him, yeah, that was up in that country. Yeah, I think him and Shana went. Up on the coast. Somewhere. Up and, in the northeast. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take, now that I just sauteed the garlic just a little bit for about a minute, I'm taking out my pot. And now I'm going to put all of my mixture in this pot. Uh -oh. Did I make a mess on that side? There's a corn for you. <laughs> There's one on this side too. It never fails. Okay. Messy cooks, happy husband. That's right. That's what they say. Okay, I've got five cups of, uh, this is low sodium uh, organic chicken broth. If you've got your own canned broth, that's even better. I don't have any right now. And I'll be doing that when it co cooler weather, I'll be doing that. Um, you can make you some broth with just your, uh, what is it? better than bouillon, the base, and all that stuff, just as long as you've got. Now, if you don't want to use chicken broth, you can use a vegetable broth, too. That will be really good. So we're going to pour our five cups of uh, chicken broth in there. Low sodium. Low sodium. Um, I like to control my own salt, and a lot of chicken broths are so salty. Just remember, salt enhances your flavor. You can, pepper changes it, so. Yeah, pepper does change it. I'm not salt. a big, I, I'm one of them people don't have a, I'm not a huge salt, no I'm wrong, I like salt, but well, if it's over salted, I don't have no use for it. No, that. I can't eat over salted food, that's for sure, and it's not good for you. This way, if you get low sodium, you can control it yourself. But I'm fixing to add some salt to it, and you can even decrease the amount that I'm fixing to put in there. But I've got a teaspoon and a half of salt. That's what the recipe calls for, and that's what I was going to put in there. I've got a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Let's see, I've got a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. I've got a half a teaspoon of dry parsley. I've got a half a teaspoon of paprika, and I've got a fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric. Turmeric is optional. I like to put it in my soups and stuff because it's so good for you. So now that we got our broth in there, we're just going to put all of our seasonings in there. And you know the good thing about salt? If you taste your food, especially like a soup, you can always add a little bit of salt. Oh yeah, that's why, you know, you should always taste your, whatever you're cooking. Taste it as you go. What I run into, and we run into, is going to a restaurant, and they have over-salted everything. Yeah, that's and, most of the time, it's over-salted. It, it just ruins the meal for me. But. Okay, now I've got two, two potatoes here. These were, uh, you can use russet, you can use red. These were your yellow Yukon out of your garden. These are potatoes that Mr. Brown grew. Uh, they were two big potatoes. So I've got two large potatoes I'm gonna put in here at this point. I'm gonna turn my, whoops, it's not even on Mr. Brown. I'm gonna turn this up to high heat and I'm gonna bring it to a boil. And then I'm gonna let this boil for about 10 minutes before we add the rest of the ingredients. So really and truly, it doesn't take very long to get all this together once you get everything cut up Wouldn't and prepped. you have about a 15 minute prep time roughly? Yeah, and I like cutting up vegetables, so it don't bother, it don't bother me. Especially when your knives are sharp. Especially when Mr. Brown has sharpened my knives. So. And I forgot to turn your burner on, and that's my fault. <laughs> That's okay. I got it on. So we're going to let this come up to a boil and let it boil for 10 minutes.
Okay, our potatoes and stuff have been cooking for 10 minutes now. And you don't want to cook them too long. You just want to get them, just cook them 10 minutes because you're fixing to put the zucchini in here and it needs to cook another 10, about 10 minutes till the zucchini softens up too. And I failed to mention a while ago that I had cut my potatoes up into one fourth, about a fourth of an inch, you know, cubes. About, if I can get one, I'll show you. But anyways, you don't want them too big because they're going to be kind of blended up anyways. So now that our potatoes have cooked for 10 minutes, let's add our zucchini. And you can also put yellow squash in here too. The zucchini was just cubed up, probably just a little bigger than a fourth of an inch cubes. Now if that's in there, we're going to let this cook another 10 minutes and let the zucchini soften up too. Okay, our potatoes and our zucchini is done. So after cooking your potatoes for 10 minutes and then putting your zucchini in for 10 minutes, both of them are good and tender. And I'm going to take my hand immersion blender. If you don't have one, you can just use your regular blender and blend it up. So what I like to do is blend it up. And I also love to, I like to use, leave just a little bit of a uh, chunk in there, not much. So I'm going to blend this up a little. Okay, I've been blending this for about a minute. And this is about the consistency I think that me and Mr. Brown like. Now, if you want it pureed a little bit more than that, then you do it more than that. I kind of like to have a little bit of texture in there, but that's just up to you how you like it. So now that I've got this pureed, we're going to take it over to the stove. And, uh, and now we're going to put in our two cups of half and half. If you don't have any half and half, you can put a cup of heavy cream and a cup of milk. Or you can put all milk, two cups of milk. And we're just going to stir that around. We're just going to heat this through for just a couple minutes. Okay, I just, after putting the half and half in here, all I did was just put it back on a very low simmer for just a few minutes. And I'm going to add my bacon in there. It, this was about four, four strips, four or five strips of bacon just cooked and crumbled up. We're going to add that to it. That'll warm your bacon through and through. And then we're going to put it in our bowls and serve it up. Well, the water's heated up and we hear it whistling, don't we? Mm -hmm. Turn it off. Okay, so we're going to make some hot water cornbread. The only reason I know they call it hot water cornbread is because you use hot water in your cornmeal. This come from way back when, when you just had the basics for food and you didn't have much ingredients. I'm going to doctor mine up a little bit today. And don't start hollering, Mr. Brown, that's a hush puppy. It's hot water cornbread today is what we're going to call it. And uh, you can use yellow, you can use white, you can use purple. I don't care. Whatever cornmeal you got and you like, that's what you need to use. It's real simple. I have two cups. We're using yellow cornmeal today. Two cups of cornmeal. Tablespoon of salt. Two teaspoons. Is that what it is? Yeah. Two teaspoons. That looks like, that looks like a big <laughs> tablespoon to me. It's not. Okay. So you done messed me, got me off track now. Yeah. Two teaspoons of salt. Right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And I want to talk about this spoon right quick. This is an old Pamper Chef spoon. My favorite spoon in the house. You can tell. It's been it's been ground in a skillet. It's been it's, I stir my tea with it all the time. Coffee. And uh, my coffee. <laughs> when I put sugar in my tea, I use it. And my coffee. Uh, when I make co I make coffee, cowboy coffee every morning. Anyway, that's my favorite spoon. I like the way it feels. I just like it. Okay, so we got salt. We got two cups of cornmeal. Now then. 
we're going to add a little bit of oil fourth of a cup or two tablespoons I'm gonna stir that salt up first I'm gonna put my secret ingredients in this I'm gonna put some onion powder how much is that right there I don't know we're gonna call that can you see that it ain't very much is it we're gonna add a little more we're gonna call that a tablespoon maybe you call it what you want you're cooking it but look at that I made a mess <laughs> and then we're gonna put a little bit of garlic in here about the same amount just about that much right there well, that was quick but same amount of garlic as we did and you get it all over your hands then we're going to stir this up right quick just to mix the ingredients i have to hurry up my boiling water is going to get hot and cold and then we're going to add our two tablespoons of oil and we're using peanut oil today you can use vegetable oil and the reason for this is to just to help keep your bread moist they probably didn't have oil they may not have had oil back in the time and we're going to stir that up smash it in there a little bit mix it around i to kind of mash that oil in there and see it might, won't be so lumpy maybe changing color my cornmeal's getting darker That may not be necessary, I don't know, but I like to do it like this. I like to mix that oil in there good. Good job. We know that oil and water don't mix good anyway, right? <laughs> okay, so we got about three, I don't know, about four cups of water in here. Now then, you don't wanna pour all that in at one time because as you, you bake and people know that it ain't always the same when it, when it depends on your uh, the weather and what's going on. So. We're going to pour a little bit at a time and stir it in. You don't want it, you sure don't want your batter, you sure don't want it runny. What we're going to do with it. And I have to be careful because I get thinking, boy, it's kind of like mixing concrete. Next thing you know, you got runny concrete so the purpose of the hot water is to cook your meal and we're going today we're going to deep fry this bread for the most part and uh we're gonna need just a little more maybe you don't want to overdo it week you reckon you had cornbread growing up uh, at least two three times I had uh, cornbread a lot I mean that was you know your main bread it wasn't just a lot of bread you ate corn, cornbread all cornbread the time. was real regular and biscuits I think it needs you think it needs maybe just a little more maybe it's starting to make that ball you don't want to get too much got my meal at the consistency that I like, want right there you can take it like this right here 
See how you can make a ball out of it? Okay, so they're starting to flow, and I'm gonna flip it over golden brown. What did they cook, about a minute? I don't think they really cooked. That grease pretty hot on that round. The last I put in, you can tell it's not quite as brown. You don't want to cook them too long until they get like brick. They'll get hard. And this is a very coarse cornmeal. I say a finer ground, they probably wouldn't get as hard as fast. That one there's done. Just kind of a golden brown. Like I say, you don't want to overcook them. They'll get hard. That was the whole idea of putting a hot boiling water in your in your cornmeal was that your cornmeal would be done. So you don't have to cook them a real long time. Because your meal is going to be cooked regardless. I turned this one a while ago probably just a little bit fast, but she's cooked all the way through, looks like. And that one there. That's a rough cut, ain't it? <laughs> So we could cook the rest of these up and freeze them, couldn't we? Yes. And eat them later. Yes. Okay, so we got our cornbread done. Now we use a coarse yellow meal. You could use a finer meal, a self-rising meal. But back in the day, they had probably just a coarse ground yellow cornmeal. Now you can see the texture of those that you just, I just roughly just plopped in there and you see that it's, it's uh, gonna be really crunchy. Now that's why I fried this, is because we want the crunch with our chow chatter, chatter, chowder, our chowder. Our chowder. I, I like crunchy stuff. I like crunchy bread. But uh, I'm probably gonna drop that down in that chowder and let it soak a second and put it in my mouth. Uh, now you could have took these and put in a flat skillet or something and made you a patty and just cooked it on top of the stove you didn't you don't have to deep fry it you don't want to leave it too long because it will get on on this kind of meal but you see the texture inside now that texture inside will be a little softer but remember that your meal is done because we cooked it with our hot water it's gonna but it's not all going to be that you know but it can be if you make it really thick it could have a softer texture inside. But remember, it is cooked. It's already cooked with your water. So we're fixing to sit down and try some of this chowder and fried hot water cornbread. I'm gonna add just a few dried chives to our chowder before we serve it up and eat it. So this chowder is absolutely delicious. It's really good stuff, isn't it? Good. Now I want y'all to remember about this bread. This is 100 years old. I mean, this is basic bread that they would have had very few ingredients. You can use self-rising or put some uh, baking powder and, and make a little different consistency in the bread. This bread is going to be a little tougher bread. It's going to be dense a little bit. But when you dip it down here in this chowder, like that right there, and it has that crunch to it. Yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> Well guys, I hope y'all like these recipes. They're really good, both of them. The chowder, the uh, hot water cornbread, it's all good stuff. Even though it's hot weather, it's it just really, it's kind of like comfort food. It's just really good. So y'all have to try it. The recipe will be in the description box below the videos where all my recipes always are. 
just click that little arrow on if you're on your phone. If I know if you're on the TV, it's hard to do, but that's where the recipes always are in the description box. Me and Mr. Brown going to be busy this weekend with a lot of stuff, but we'll be back in a couple of days. Don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something as always. So y'all have a wonderful weekend. Y'all be safe. Stay healthy. We love y'all and God bless.